just changed the battery on this bike. I haven't ridden it in months. Let's hope it starts. Oh yeah. Always gotta stop at the railroad crossing. Oh, it's nice to have the power back. I have to change the battery on this triple at least every two years. Because in the winter time, I don't ride it every day. It's a tough engine to start that triple. So it just eats the batteries. It's a beautiful day. I'm heading off to my friend Richard's shop in Ryogoku to get some goodies. It's called My Chai, the world's best chai. It's awesome. He's a really good chef. Richard's an American and he makes, uh, he makes pastries as well, like uh, scones and uh, egg tarts, all of his own original recipes. Just super good food. So we're heading off there and uh, I'm gonna get some and we're not supposed to be eating indoors. On the weekend, they asked that people refrain from socializing. So I was all jazzed about uh, taking my son on the bike now that I got the battery changed. And then Killjoy, AKA my wife, wakes up. Dame da yo, dame, dame is no, you can't do that. And today's the stay at home day. You're not supposed to be going out. And I was like, well, we're just gonna get the food to go. And then, and I was just waiting for her to, to tell Joji this. And so she, she does, and then Joji, oh, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna go. <laughs> really set me off. So I took the remote controls, the television control and the DVD controller. If they don't get out, they sit at home all day and it's just pulling teeth, battling them to stop watching TV. It's just stick to one, come on. Oh, it's nice to have power. Giddy up. Love the Vespa. Love the Vespa. But man, sometimes you just gotta blow off some steam and a Vespa just doesn't cut the mustard. Not like a speed triple does. But I do gotta kinda take it easy because I'm a little bit pissed off right now. So I've gotta keep my wits about me. Uh, where was I? Complaining about the remote controls. Yeah, so I left. I threw the remote controls in my bag and headed off. So I'm on my way to Mai Chai. I'm sure there'll be some kind of retribution. I'll get home and there'll be some, some sort of revenge. There's those green guys. It cost me a lot of money. So my friend Richard started this Mai Chai several months ago. Now we have this world pandemic. A lot of businesses are going to be suffering from this. I hope there's a, a quick rebound, but really nobody knows. And the US has been hardest hit so far. Italy was really getting hammered, but now look at America. My God, trying to avoid looking at the news, but it's, I just can't, I can't stop looking at it a few times a day. And every time I look at it, my outlook on the future gets bleaker and bleaker. Is, is that David Cassidy? From the Partridge family? Sure looked like him. Turning left up here. If you continue straight, that takes you down into Akihabara. Oh, it's nice. Beginning of April, the air is still, has a little bit of a crisp bite to it, but the sun is out. I oh, love it. Uber Eats. These guys are really busy now. You know, in Japan, we don't tip. I always offer tips to the Uber Eats guys. At first, they're a little bit shocked, but then they have a big smile on their face and they're happy to get a little bit of extra money. Times is tough. Give where you can. I think we're gonna be seeing more and more people 
taking on these part-time gigs just to uh, get some extra money and to make ends meet. The Akihabara is back down there to the right and down this street as well to the right. That's the main street into Akihabara, right down there. There's another Uber Eats guy. This month, a lot of my jobs have been uh, postponed, so we could be in for our hailstorm in the coming couple weeks, two, three weeks. Nobody knows for sure, but the government has been hinting at potential lockdowns. Right now, it's more of a voluntary lockdown. In the Japanese constitution, they cannot enforce a lockdown meaning like with military or police force, they cannot arrest you if you are not abiding by the lockdown. Now over in this area is where Brat Style Motorcycles Custom Shop is. It's kind of just down over there. Heading across the Sumitagawa River. All right, we're gonna turn here and try not to get hit. I don't like these intersections. All right, we're gonna go for it. No, we're not. Jeez, a lot of traffic today. So much for people staying in. Shh. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go for it. If you guys like this kind of content, be sure and subscribe to the channel. I will try to get out as much as I can. And here's my chai, we made it. Here it is, bada bing, we made it. It's Grandpa Snazzy here. I'm gonna just pull in right here. My chai down in here. And uh, this is real Goku, this neighborhood. We'll check it out in a little bit. There's my friend Richard. Let's go. Here we've got meat pies, scones, egg tarts, the brownie, and cinnamon roll. This is my good friend Richard Allen, the owner of My Chai. So what what exactly are these, Richard? This is the this one here is the cinnamon roll. Yes, that's an American style cinnamon roll, the famous comfort food from America. The glaze on the top has a little bit of lemon, real lemon on the outside. Oh man, it looks really good. I did not try this the last time I was here, but I've got to get one of these too. Right, that's our uh, fondant brownie, and fondant in French means melty. Can you say that again in French? Fondant. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I do not speak French. <laughs> you just did though. Can you tell? <laughs> I've created this so it's a little melty in the inside when you heat it up. <laughs> Those are the Portuguese egg tarts. Are one of the two famous tarts in the world. The other is the, the Asian uh, tart. They're very nice in Asia. These I are... dated an Asian tart once. Did you really? <laughs> How about a Portuguese tart? <laughs> <laughs> it's on my list. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Glad to hear that. So the, these uh, have uh, kind of a caramelized uh, top. The crust is, is like a puff pastry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're quite delicate. And next up here is a, I guess this is a scone? That's right. These are our banana and walnut scones. Mm -hmm. uh, made fresh daily and uh, they are quite delectable as well. It's banana walnut, you said? Yes, that's okay. right. Um, we have blueberries sometimes and chocolate and a variety of scones. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, but not leastly, this is my favorite, the meat pie. It's a meat pie. It's a Cornish style mm -hmm. meat pie mm -hmm. from Europe. I'm also going to have a cup of your signature chai, which is fantastic. You spend a lot of time preparing or concocting your recipe for this. That's right. Well, it took me about a year and a half to create this particular one. Mm -hmm. There's a little tiny chocolate in it as oh, well, wow. in the sprinkle to give. So when you uh, put the cup to your mouth, you can smell something I immediately. That's the idea as well. All right, let me dig in. So please enjoy. Thank you. Let's go. See you, Richard. Take care. Really good guy, really good food. Look at those beautiful sakura. Ah, oh, it's nice. 
This is the Ukiyo-e Museum over here on the left. That looks really pretty. That chai was fantastic. It always is. And I got uh, meat pie, a brownie, some egg tarts to go. Bringing back to my family. You'll be happy to know my wife and I kissed and made up over the phone after our little spat. This is really pretty over here. Look at this. Wow, that's really pretty. Look at those flowers. Let's go around here and get a close-up of that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty, ladies and gentlemen? It's so pretty. So that was the uh, Tokyo Edo Museum that we just went by. Ryogoku is big for its sumo. And this building over here is where the sumo tournaments take place. I saw Iron Maiden in here. And Bruce Dickinson, lead singer, he was all butt hurt. We shouldn't have to play in a place like this, this small little venue. There were some scheduling issues and uh, this was the only venue that was open. So Iron Maiden played in there and it was good, it was a good show. But he was all butt hurt because it wasn't the Tokyo Dome or Saitama Arena. They're used to playing arenas, right? Thank you, Bruce, for that little inconvenience. So straight ahead here is where the Tokyo Edo Museum is. That building over there, the white one. And that's pretty cool as well. If you come to Ryogoku, here's these uh, keystone coppers with their shuttling the money and this is Ryogoku station right here this is the Sobu line going by above us this is the Umayabashi bridge going across the Sumida Gawa the Sumida River oh there's the uh, they call it the James Bond boat way over there it's a really low profile slick cruise boat that goes along the river over to Asakusa it's a fun river. Oh, look at this. Look at this burger stand over here. Look at all those people waiting in line. Look at that over there. They are not keeping a safe distance from one another. Another Uber Eats. There's another Uber Eats over there. This is going to be the Uber Eats episode. We're going through Okachimachi right now. And we're gonna take a little stroll via the motorcycle through Akihabara. Straight ahead is Akihabara. So dead ahead is Akihabara. Kind of on the outskirts of Akihabara right now. There's a maid over here. Very few people compared to usual for a Saturday. Oh man, way, way, way fewer people than usual. Akihabara is best seen at night with the, the night lights. It's a beautiful spot. I'm gonna cut over here. And we're gonna turn right here. Will be interesting to see how this plays out over the coming months. I pray to God that it's a fairly rapid return to normalcy. And we'll take a little different route back. Right now we're kind of running along the uh, Sobu line, the Sobu train line. We're getting close to Ochano Mizu. There it is, right over here on the left, over here. Lots of construction going on in preparation for the 2020 Olympics, which are not happening until 2021. Can you believe that? Can you imagine postponing the Olympics 
History is being rewritten every day. I had a recording the other day. I think it's might be broadcast in the next day or two, but it was a um, an interview with uh, economists, Japanese economists, and I did the voiceover of the news journalist. And uh, they were painting a pretty bleak picture of the months and beyond. I mean, are people's jobs just going to be restored at the flick of a switch? Do they just fire up the burners and everything starts to rapidly ramp back up? I don't think so. Well, this guy's got a Hayabusa. At one point, that was the world's fastest production bike. That's a nice, I like that color. It's a lot of bike for that guy. Ooh, blood. Let's catch the Bloodmobile. And make sure you catch our future content by subscribing to the channel. And be sure and check out the Peter Von Gom Japan live channel. We'll be live streaming all over Tokyo. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Ride carefully, and I'll do the same. Some of the most aggressive emergency vehicles that I've seen in Tokyo are these right here, this Bloodmobile. When they put their sirens on, they just haul asteroids down the streets. And done. Remote controls. Oh. <laughs> You do what you gotta do. <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, at least you have them in a safe place. They are safe. They are safe. <laughs> They're accounted for. <laughs> Nobody's watching TV at my house. No TV. <laughs>